up guys? My name is Levi. I'm from Shred Shop in Cochrane, Alberta. This is the ultimate guide about everything you need to know about Supreme. It's crazy facts, the history, unreal lawsuits, collabs, and tons of other stuff on the brand. The first Supreme collab shoes and rumors about where the next Supreme stores are going to be. The most expensive Supreme product of all time, what brands sued Supreme and later collabed with them, and why Supreme can't sell their own product firsthand in China. And if you stay all the way to the end, we've got a couple bonus facts. Uh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I've never considered Supreme to be a, a fashion company or myself a designer. I appreciate the recognition for what we do. James Jebbia was born in the U.S., but lived in England from when he was one and moved to New York City when he was 19. In 1989, James Jebby opened his first shop called Union NYC. It was more of an experiment for him with exclusive brands after he worked with Sean Stussy, founder of Stussy, for a few years. In 2019, James Jebby has a net worth of $400 million. That's a celebrity net worth. He lives in a loft in Greenwich Village in Manhattan with his wife Bianca, his two kids, and his chihuahua. The loft is super minimalistic and has bookshelves from Danish designer Mogens Koch and porcelain ceramics by Picasso. No mention of Supreme anywhere. James Jebbia also has a house in East Hampton in New York. In 1994, Jebbia opens his first Supreme store on Lafayette Street in Soho, downtown Manhattan. He took the name from the John Coltrane song, A Love Supreme. Mostly they were reselling Stussy and some other streetwear, skatewear brands. The shop cost him about $12,000 to open and his rent was $2,000 a month. He left it open so people could hang and skate in there. The store became the spot for skaters from all over New York City to meet up and hang out. It was more of a social hub than a store. It became an icon of New York street culture and skateboarding. It is the amazing ties to talented New York artists for those who know. In 2004, Supreme opened their second store on Fairfax Ave in Los Angeles. It's almost twice as big as a New York City location and it has an indoor bowl in it. After opening the LA store, it was followed by six Japan locations. London in 2011, Paris in 2016, they opened their second New York City location in Brooklyn, and this was the 11th Supreme store worldwide. They have rumors of plans to open their 12th store on Market Street in San Francisco. But I gotta ask you, where do you think they'll open the next one? Over the years, Supreme has collabed with celebrities such as Raekwon in 2016, Kermit in 2008, Mike Tyson in 2007, Lou Reed, Miles Davis, Public Enemy, to name a few. So there's a guy named Terry Richardson. He's a controversial fashion photographer, and he worked with Supreme shooting lots of the most iconic photos from Ray Kwan and Lou Reed to Kermit the Frog, Kate Moss, and Lady Gaga. They have also collabed with well-respected artists like George Kondo, Damien Hirst, Christopher Wool, Sean Cliver, Marilyn Minter, Richard Prince, who later designed bags with Marc Jacobs for Louis Vuitton, Jeff Koons, Peter Saville, Mark Gonzalez, Kaz, Ryan McGuinness, Mirakami, in 1994, Supreme had no money for ads, so they went around New York City tagging everything with Supreme stickers. They started tagging Calvin Klein ads all over the city that had Kate Moss all over them. What Calvin Klein did is they launched a lawsuit in 2012 against Supreme, but what's funny is later on, they actually worked together with Kate Moss on the real Supreme collab, which is making it kind of crazy. In the year 2000, Supreme launched a collection ripping off the Louis Vuitton monogram logos. This led to a lawsuit from Louis Vuitton they also ripped off Gucci, but Gucci didn't launch any lawsuits. But again, later in their career in 2017, Supreme does a Louis Vuitton official collab, and at the time there were tons of rumors that Louis Vuitton was going to buy Supreme. The collab launched at pop-up shops all around the world and featured the most expensive items Supreme has ever made, including the Louis Supreme bag. Supreme got lots more lawsuits and cease and desist, including the NCAA and the NHL. You guys already know this. But the Supreme logo is a red box logo with Supreme written in it in Futura bold italic. James Jebbia has admitted that with the Supreme classic box logo, it was inspired by Barbara Kruger's pop art, I shop, therefore I am, which is a Futura bold italic font places in different boxes with pop colors, which is making fun of our consumer culture. Pretty ironic when you see what Supreme has become. This is a quote from Barbara Kruger on, in reference to Supreme ripping off her box logo. She said, what a ridiculous cluster f of totally uncool jokers. I make my work about this kind of sadly foolish farce. I'm waiting for all of them to sue me for copyright infringement. 
she later did a big collab with Volcom with using red box locos to try and poke the beast to see if Supreme would sue her. Let's talk collabs. Supreme has done a ton of them. The first collab ever was with Vans and they made an old school designer by who now runs as Noah in 1996. The first Nike collab was in 2002. It released the iconic Jordan Elephant Nikes. The Supreme Nike collabs have been famous over the years. Even having NYPD shut down some releases due to the rioting on the lineups, such as the 2014 Foam Posits, these shoes were based off of Versace print. Other collabs consist of Nike Riots, launching Nike SB, Supreme Louis Vuitton collab for their Mal case that cost $177,000. They also had a skateboard monogram that cost $101,000, and all their bags were over $10,000. They had a Supreme and Playboy collection, Supreme and Yankees collection, Supreme and Nike Star Dunks, Red Blazers, North Face, Swarovski, the Gons with their favorite Spalding Gons basketball, the Sopranos, Thrasher, White Castle, and the Fender Guitar. They collabed with Budweiser, with the New York Post. The Louisville Slugger, Antihero, Campbell's Soup, and Oakley. Some dope knickknacks that Supreme has made are the tagging markers. Their collab with Everlast. They made pinball machines, thermoses, buck knives, dice, the switchblade comb, the metro card, you might have seen those around, the air horn, and the crucifix knife keychain. You can also check they've some, done some really dumb collabs, some really stupid ones, with Fox Goggles. The Brick, you guys seen that? Hot Wheels, Director's Chair, their Band-Aids, their Tennis Balls, their Fire Extinguisher, and their Hot Water Bottle. In 2019, there was a ton of fake Supreme. The word Supreme is hard to trademark, so there have been a lot of rip-offs targeting the brand. With Supreme recently losing lawsuits to Supreme Italia, who is opening fake Supreme stores all over Italy and Spain. They also just opened this massive fake Supreme store in Shanghai with another one opening soon in Beijing. They're planning to open over 70 new fake Supreme stores around the world. Some people saying Barbara Kruger must be laughing now or Supreme got Supremed. This company owns the right to the name Supreme NYC in China. The first person to collab gets the license. So fake Supreme owns the rights for all of China. <music>
Here's the thing. With the future of Supreme being invested in by the Carlyle Group, Supreme's actually going to have to grow a ton more in the future because investors, they want return. We're guessing this means a ton of new locations coming soon. What do you guys think? Where do you think the next location is going to be? Will Supreme be able to stay on top of it with this massive growth with stores and being having products readily available? Will it stay as elite and coveted as they once were or as they are? Guys, thanks for watching. I am Levi. I am from Shred Skate Shop in Cochrane, Alberta. Hit us up on our website, shredskateshop.com. Follow us on Instagram, at shredshop. Or like and subscribe. Check out more videos. We've got a ton of info out there. Thanks for watching.